everyone. Thank you so much for pressing play. So today I'm super excited because we are going to get a Christmas tree and you are coming along with us. So in the past, I wrestled with getting a tree. I started to see different people, especially on social media, you guys, social media could drive you nuts, but <laughs> I'm glad that I was reading this because I started to see different people feel strongly about desiring not to get a Christmas tree or even celebrate Christmas because of the pagan origins of Christmas. Some people will go so far as to say that it's ungodly if you celebrated Christmas. Whenever I hear of someone's strong conviction in a specific area, it always forces me to dig deep into scripture. In the past, I've fallen so short that if I've heard someone share a conviction that sounded right I would just say that makes sense and go with that but God was kind of showing me my heart behind that like wait people are fallible God's word is infallible right and so may we always always seek to recalibrate our thinking our conscience with God's word I'm gonna be talking about conscience, I'm gonna be talking about convictions in this video, and I don't wanna assume that everybody knows what that means. So when I talk about convictions, what am I talking about? Some things aren't necessarily sinful, but maybe our conscience isn't at peace with it. We don't wanna sin against our conscience, which is something I'm still studying, you guys. I got this book like probably this past year. Um, but in this past month, I picked up this book and I have not been able to put it down. It's called Conscience. What it is, how to train it, and loving those who differ. The reason why I really love it is they share so many scriptures. The back says, what do you do when you disagree with other Christians? How do you determine which convictions are negotiable and which are not? How do you get along with people who have different personal standards? All of these questions have to do with the conscience. And so, you guys, I really love this book. As I was looking more into that with this subject of the Christmas tree um, and Christmas, I want to make it clear if you don't feel comfortable with celebrating Christmas, that's fine. If you feel comfortable celebrating Christmas, then that's fine too, right? As long as we do all things to the glory of God. Romans 14, 23 says, but whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So it's hard to understand, right? If we do something that is not from faith, it's sin. And then it's kind of confusing because you're like, wait, what does that mean, right? So I wanted to give an example, even with my own life. Many who have followed me know that my husband and I decided to wait until marriage to have our first kiss. He was my first godly relationship where I genuinely desired to honor the Lord. And so I knew for me that even kissing him felt like a sin to me. The Bible doesn't say that kissing is a sin, right? It's fornication that's a sin. But for me, I felt very convicted in this area. And I knew that I wanted to wait until marriage to kiss him. Because I knew that even if I kissed him, my mind would lust. And I would just, my mind would go to places it, it shouldn't. And it could lead us into doing more. And so I decided to share that with Sean and Sean was on the same page as me. And so we waited until marriage. So that's an example of where my conscience was like, mm, I don't feel comfortable kissing. I don't feel like it's going to honor God. You know, as Paul says, I believe it's in Corinthians, they were free to eat. But some people who were now believers, but once offered meat to idols, no longer felt comfortable with that. And if their conscience was weak in that area, then that's fine. For me, even with the whole kissing, you know, I didn't feel comfortable with it. Another example could be maybe with a glass of wine. Somebody may feel for them it's sinful. No, I don't want to drink. They don't feel the freedom to do so, whereas another person feels free to do so, right? And so, you know, may we never lead anyone to stumble. May we always be aware of what we're doing, how it affects others, and be prayerful about that, right? But there are areas where we have a freedom. Of course, there are things that are explicitly sinful. Like if someone says, oh, okay, well, my conscience is okay with committing adultery. Like me and my spouse aren't doing well, so it's okay. My conscience feels free. No, that is clearly sinful. That's why we always have to recalibrate our thinking to what God's word says, because there could be things that our conscience feels free to do that's clearly sinful or things that our conscience doesn't feel free to do that almost holds us in bondage, you know, in a way where we're just like scared to even move or think or anything. So that's why God's word sets us free from all of this, you know. And so in regards to Christmas, I wanted to share this scripture, Romans 14, 5 through 6, that says, 
One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes a day, observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. May whatever we decide to do may be to bring God glory. Even if we do decide to celebrate Christmas and we feel the freedom to, are we seeking to bring God glory? Is that our goal? Or is it this whole world's mentality of Christmas? Is it the self-indulgence? Is what my continued prayer is that I would seek to bring God glory, that I would seek to remember the incarnation of God, that, you know, I could remember the gospel during this holiday. So we have to even check our motives, even in those areas where we are free. Yes, we're free to celebrate Christmas, but what is our motive behind it? And so the scripture that many point to to express why getting a tree and decorating it is pagan is in Jeremiah 10, 1 through 6. Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in the cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. When we look at this scripture and we see a tree from the forest is cut down, they decorate it with silver and gold, that sounds like a Christmas tree, right? But when we read the whole thing in context, we see that they were literally creating an idol to worship. This text is talking about them cutting a tree down, carving it to worship it, to make it their God. And I just wanted to close with a quote by R.C. Sprawl. And he says, it just so happens that on the 25th of December in the Roman Empire, there was a pagan holiday that was linked to mystery religions. The pagans celebrated their festival on December 25th. The Christians didn't want to participate in that. So they said, while everybody else is celebrating this pagan thing, we're going to have our own celebration. We're going to celebrate the thing that's most important in our lives, the incarnation of God, the birth of Jesus Christ. So this is going to be a time of joyous festivities of celebration and worship of our God and King. And so that was the mindset because I know some people feel like, oh, it was, you know, the pagans made that tradition of celebration celebrating on December 25th and Jesus wasn't born that day. Just even looking back into history on why Christians decided to imagine living somewhere where all the pagans around you are celebrating their pagan holiday, right? And you, especially if you have children, you don't want your children affected and you want something joyous, something truthful to celebrate. And so you decide to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with that. To me, my conscience feels free to celebrate it. Like I said earlier, if your conscience doesn't, then just continue to look into God's word. And even if after you look into God's word, you still are just like, okay, I'm at peace with not celebrating it, then that's fine. I just pray that we won't look down on one another, whether we do or whether we don't. So yeah, hope you enjoy watching us get our tree. So we got in the car to head straight to the tree store. I love you guys. I was super excited by the way. This is my first real tree. So I was literally like a little kid. Like, babe, there's trees. <laughs> and then we found our tree that was so cute. Cute little tree. And the guy was explaining how he had to cut the bottom of it. Um, so that the tree wouldn't die it could actually drink up the water last us at least a week <laughs> it's been holding up actually and there's my baby <laughs> it was so cold this little process was cool too how they put the netted bag on the tree to put it on top of the car Look at all those different trees. And then we put it on the car. <laughs> I was excited. You ever see those families driving with the tree in the car? Yep, well, that was me. <laughs> and then we went to the store, stopped at Target, picked up some lights. 30% off, by the way. Good deal. 
Then we had to get a tree stand because uh, the tree place ran out. There I am. <laughs> And now we put our tree together and obviously I'm going to zip through this section because it took us all night, literally all night. <laughs>